sound speeds. And yes, I'm breaking one of my rules here by having a microphone right in front of my face, but there's a very good reason I'm doing that. And that's because in this video, I'm going to be testing the effectiveness and necessity of things like isolation shields and crash guards. Do we even need them if you're doing some sort of voiceover? Let's dig in. Before we get going, let me say this. I'm not going to be doing any post-processing in this video, but you're going to be hearing my computer fans and my air conditioning and even a white noise generator because I want to see if those sounds are going to make it into this microphone. Now, which microphone am I going to be using today? Believe it or not, the Rode NT1A, and I'm using it inside of this clip as opposed to the shock mount and windscreen that it comes with. And the reason I'm using the Rode NT1A and not the Rode NT1 is because the Rode NT1A boosts a little bit in the higher frequencies and it's to help you get a little bit more sibilance and give it more of an infomercial type sound that's a little more difficult for you to ignore. And that's also going to, in this case, help us to hear our computer fans and some of the other sounds maybe a little bit better. Now, let me also tell you about the acoustics in the room that we're recording in today. Obviously, you can see the two inch acoustic foam to my right and behind me, but because it's behind me, it's not going to be doing a whole lot for us. But to my left, it's a completely open room that measures about 12 by 15 feet and there's carpet on this floor. In front of me is a 24 inch computer monitor and as for the table right here there is a towel folded into fourths and so it's basically four layers of towel sitting right underneath here so hopefully that's going to help curb some of that reflection and kind of level the playing field now let's start adding in some noise but first let's listen to this quiet room and because i'm using the rode nt1a which is one of the quietest microphones there is in the world you're not going to be hearing any noise floor on this microphone. You're going to probably be hearing, if anything, my ceiling fan, which is over there. Now let's start adding in computer fan noise. SpeedFan is a wonderful program that allows you to scan your computer and then manipulate and adjust the fan noise of any fan that is not hard switchable by hand on your computer. And there's five fans on this computer, which are currently set to 0% operation. Now we're going to turn them up to 100%, but first I want you to listen and see if you can hear them go on. I'm pretty sure you heard all that and sorry for the stomach growling. Now, we're also going to add in a white noise generated by this wonderful program called Audio to Test Tone Generator. It's a program on Android and I'm not going to turn it up too loud, but I am going to put this right over here in front so that we can have a good base of sound directly behind the microphone. This is a cardioid pattern microphone. I'm going to face it exactly the opposite direction from that sound source. Now let's start actually listening to this background noise. Uh, I guess it's not quite ready until I turn on the air conditioning. Let's do that now. Now that we have our computer fan noise coming from between the table and the wall right there, we have a white noise generator right here in front of me and we have the air conditioning pumping the air into the room right there. Hopefully, you will agree with me that this is not a room you would ever want to record in. I'll go quiet for a second. You can listen. Yeah, this is not a room that you want to record in at all. And the reason I have all the noise sources on that side is because this is a cardioid pattern microphone. And as long as I have it facing my mouth and away from the noise sources, it's going to reject out as effectively as possible all those different sources of noise. And if you have any questions about what exactly a cardioid pattern microphone is, watch that video right there and I'll explain it. Now, because I'm only about three or so inches away from this Rode NT1A, you're going to be hearing a lot of proximity effect as I talk. And that is basically an enhanced bass sound that comes from being close to a microphone. Believe it or not, if someone talks very close to your ear, it does the exact same thing. The reason why is mids and high sounds travel a lot easier through air than lower frequencies because they're more omnidirectional and go in every single direction. So it actually takes more power to thrust the deeper frequencies out into the air at a farther distance. So the closer you are to a noise source, the more you're going to hear that bass because there's really no air to dissipate it. This is one of the more inexpensive and affordable isolation shields on the market today. It is simply made of plastic with about one inch of acoustic foam in front of it. And newer calls this the NW7 Vocal Booth. Links down in the description if you'd like to check it out. In order to use it, you simply drop it between the microphone and the sources that you're hoping to block out. 
like the ones that are behind the microphone. So if you are listening right now, you should hear those sounds behind the microphone a little bit more attenuated than they were a moment ago before I put in the isolation shield. And if I'm speaking into the microphone this way, hopefully you're able to hear, or at least the idea is that you're able to hear my voice a little bit better because it is more focused. The rear lobe of the microphone should be basically catching nothing from the rear or reduced sound from the rear i should say and hopefully that's happening i'll go quiet for a second and let you listen now the idea behind this crash card is if you put a microphone on the inside and then you put it over cymbals on your drum kit or something that's high pitched like that then you should be able to reduce some of the reflections of those high pitched sounds from coming into the microphone and because this is a front facing microphone and the crash guard is made of metal with a little bit of acoustic foam on the inside hopefully it's going to be pretty effective at reducing some of these background noises check it out now obviously these sounds are pretty aggressive so why don't we compare the sounds now between the microphone by itself the microphone with an isolation shield and the microphone with a crash guard and hear how they sound on my voice as I'm talking into them. The reason I have all the noise sources on that side is because this is a cardioid pattern microphone. Hear my voice a little bit better because it is more focused. Then you should be able to reduce some of the reflections of those high pitched sounds. And now the noise floor of each of these microphone setups complete with a spectral analysis of the frequencies that are coming into the microphone in each configuration. And now, just for fun, what would happen if I used fairly aggressive noise suppression software, like for example, Refer instead of Reaper? Would I be able to get a decent amount of noise out to make my voice sound good and maybe even usable for something like video game streaming? The reason I have all the noise sources on that side is because this is a cardioid pattern microphone. Hear my voice a little bit better because it is more focused. Then you should be able to reduce some of the reflections of those high pitched sounds. So what did you think of this very aggressive background noise test versus a microphone by itself, a microphone with an isolation shield and a microphone inside of a crash card? Tell me in the comment section down below which one you preferred, if any at all. And tell me if you thought the noise suppression software I ran was enough to save my vocal track. And if so, what do you think that I would be able to do with that vocal track? Probably not an audiobook, but do you think it's enough for something like game streaming or maybe a podcast? Tell me. I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts. But in the meantime, thanks for tuning into this episode of Sound Speeds. Be sure to tune in the future for more interesting tasks and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.